So let's start at the very top. Uh, what does the term dysbiosis mean? There's sort of this, this term is thrown around a lot in the, in the, in the internet and beyond. So can you give us a, an idea of what does the term dysbiosis mean? And secondarily, why is it so important in today's world? Yeah, so dysbiosis is an imbalance between the types of organisms that live in the gut. So the analogy I like to use is imagine a double pan scale, you know, those judges scales where there's two sides and you're supposed to have a certain type of uh, microorganisms on one side in the gut and um, other types of organisms on the other side. Some are pro-inflammatory and some are anti-inflammatory. And this scale always has to be equal. And if there is an imbalance, that could lead to disease. Um, in the gut, there are 100 trillion gut microbiome, and that consists of bacteria, viruses, protozoa, archaea, and um, uh, yeast. And all of these members of the gut microbiome are important, and there is a certain level of balance that's happening. If there is an imbalance, let's just say, for example, you take antibiotics for 14 days for a sinus infection, that throws the balance out and it kills a certain amount of bacteria and then the yeast can overgrow. And let's say you try to take antifungals for a toe infection and then you eradicate the yeast the bacteria can overgrow. So the balance of the bacteria, the um, and the viruses and the protozoa and the yeast, they're very important and they all live in a symbiotic relationship. And dysbiosis occurs when something goes out of balance and that could lead to disease. So it's important, um, you said, why is that important? Well, it can lead to inflammatory disorders. For example, a very good example of that, which I see in the hospital all the time. It's very common, it's called C. diff colitis. So C. diff is an inflammatory bacteria that produces toxins that can cause ulcerations and colitis in the colon. And it can lead to um, severe infection and actually in some cases death. That C. diff colitis occurs um, very commonly because people who are in the hospital are getting heavy doses of IV antibiotics and oral antibiotics for say, a diabetic foot ulcer or infection. And sometimes we have to use it because otherwise they would get an amputation of the leg. So they have sepsis, they have urosepsis or an overwhelming systemic infection where you're supposed to and have no choice but to use antibiotics, but then that throws out the balance of the gut. And then the, um, the inflammatory or the bad bacteria takes over. Uh, in this case, it would be Clostridium, Clostridium difficile. That's why it's called C. diff, because it's so hard to say Clostridium difficile. But it produces these toxins and that leads to colitis. So that's where dysbiosis is, is dangerous and could be life-threatening. And everyone should respect, respect the balance of the gut microbiome. So many people living with type 2 diabetes experience gastroparesis. So what is gastroparesis and what causes it? Yeah, gastroparesis is a dysmotility of uh, the stomach. So, um, you know, it, it basically means that the nerves of the stomach are damaged and they're not um, squeezing well and the food is not emptying the stomach. So gastroparesis usually um, has different causes, but one of the causes happens to be diabetes because of what thought to be the advanced glycated products and products that damage these the myelin sheets of the nerves. And actually, my research in undergrad was on diabetes, you guys. You'd be, you'd be happy to hear that probably. I used to be obsessed with diabetes in undergrad. Um, and that's where my research was. But, um, you know, we were developed. I was, my research was mostly about what can we do to take away these um, advanced and glycated products to uh, free the nerve sheets and reverse uh, the... Uh, diabetic neuropathy, now I realize that food is even more important than <laughs> in prevention of it, of course, and, and all that stuff. But anyway, when you get damage to the nerves, um, these nerves stop working properly and the prostatic action of the stomach goes away. And that is referred to as gastroparesis or a slow moving stomach, which leads to gastroesophageal reflux. It leads, leads to excessive burping and gas, uh, early satiety, bloating. It leads to nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. And it's a very 
disabling problem because it really affects people's quality of life. But you know, it's important to realize that even though gastroparesis is the most common one um, that you heard, hear about, there's also dysmotility of the small bowel. There is also dysmotility of the large bowel when you have advanced diabetes. And uh, it's, it turns out so it's very important that people follow you guys and listen to what you're saying and eat the types of foods that you're talking about in reversing their diabetes. And I know exactly what you guys do and we have a lot of patients in common and I, I can tell you if people ate like that, they would not have these advanced glycated end products and they would not have the, the nerve damage that people usually have in America because of eating a lot of animal protein and animal fats. What happens is these um, the research shows that these animal proteins and animal fats get glycated, which means bind to uh, sugar molecules, and they eat up the myelin sheets that are cover the nerves. And when that happens, the electrical conductivity doesn't go through the nerve, and uh, basically the nerves become damaged and don't work very well. Um, this is why when people switch to a whole food plant-based diet, and especially a raw diet, um, which is low in fat, they can reverse all of that. And to a certain degree, they can um, reverse their gastroparesis. I see people who, um, who reverse their diabetes and their gastroparesis goes away. So it's not, um, it's not too late if you have gastroparesis and um, you can reverse it to a certain degree. And it's, it's not high blood glucose readings that are the problem that are necessarily causing AGs. It's the food that people are eating, which then also leads to high blood glucose readings and out of control diabetes. And oh, absolutely. Gastroparesis. Yes. Um, yes, gastroparesis is basically, um, the problem is, like you said, it's, it's not the actual, um, it's the foods that people are eating because when they're eating a high animal fat, animal protein, that is what causes the damage. That is the underlying cause of it. Now, of course, if you're eating the animal pro uh, proteins and the animal fats, then you eat sugary foods too, then that is just the perfect storm. But the underlying etiology is not um, the fruits and vegetables. I mean, of course, those are actually reversing, not disease contributing. Okay, so, so gastroparesis seems like it's one of many different conditions that can affect people living with type 2 diabetes. Uh, let's go through a couple other conditions that are common in the world of type 2 diabetes. Uh, what do you generally see as far as digestive health is concerned? And, and why is there such a strong connection between diabetes and other digestive conditions? Well, um, diabetes affects you from head to your, down to your toes. Of course, diabetes is a, a controlling blood sugar is absolute, an absolute important um, factor in, in, in the health of the body. But besides um, gastroparesis, there is a gastroesophageal reflux disease. That there's gallbladder, but by the way, I'm just naming you the ones that I see on a daily basis to tell you what kind of uh, things can go wrong besides gastroparesis. So there's GERD, there's gallbladder disease, there's uh, pancreas disease, there's fatty liver disease, which is now the most common cause of chronic liver disease in America, where it used to be viral hepatitis. There's inflammatory bowel disease, there is constipation, there's diarrhea, there's irritable bowel syndrome, um, there's colon cancer, and... Um, Basically, they're, those are the common ones that I see. There's um, infectious gastroenteritis. And I see these basically on a daily basis. Um, so gut health is actually, um, you know, it's very important and it can manifest many, many organs. It can manifest um, different types of diseases. And um, it's quite common that um, I see people with diabetes come in with several things happening on that list. So I told you um, what happens with diabetes. Um, I see them come in with gastroesophageal reflux disease. They will come in with diarrhea. They'll come in with constipation. They'll come in with small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. So when um, blood sugar is not controlled, when there is damage to the nerves, the GI tract gets affected severely. 